It's actually cleaner than I thought it'd be. So, to remove it, there's a Phillips screw back there. You can see that. We're going to take that off. Next up, there's a tiny little tab right here. We're going to use our knockoff plastic pry tools. Get that open. And then there is a Phillips screw again. Then this tie down point down here, we're going to open it up. Again, using plastic pry tool, you can use a flathead screwdriver if you're just careful with it. But with these, you can kind of be a little rougher, like I just did. And that's a 10 millimeter. Go ahead and remove the floor pieces while you're at it. They just lift off and pop out. It's super easy to get them off. From there, you pull this out. should be able to access the module which awesome. gotta go handheld for this but once inside where there is the plug we're after we're gonna go ahead unplug that plug the module in Once that's done, this is as far as the diode dynamics video goes, and they go, just do it on the other side. But the thing is, the other side is different, as you can see, which is why I'm making this video. And yes, the car isn't typically equipped with D-rings. By the way, random bit of helpful info, if you ever need to tie anything down, you can put a D-ring right there. And the car won't even know, it won't even beep at you, you can drive around with the trunk open like that. So I believe Limiteds have the, is this Harman Kardon or McIntosh? They, some models have this subwoofer here, some of them don't, just know that. But this, again, is a Phillips back there. There's a Phillips here, and then there's another 10 millimeter here. So that is the same, but the panel itself is different, and I don't know if this subwoofer causes any problems. We're about to find out. So... When they say the other side's the same, what they mean is the other side is not the same. There's a subwoofer there. The connector is not there. You can look. Let's see how deep it is. Ooh, look. There's five grounds on a single bolt there. I believe that is the maximum. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's the maximum of the books that you can actually put on a single ground in that style. Otherwise, you'd have to join them. That's just me nerding out, sorry. What I've done now, I didn't get a good video of it, but there was a bracket here. It was two 10 millimeter bolts. Now, I'm gonna take the subwoofer out. I don't think you gotta take this bracket out now that I'm thinking about it, but I'm gonna take the subwoofer out. I have now located the plug. It is back here. I can fill it. However, I cannot get to it. So I'm going to remove the subwoofer bracket. I believe you could actually remove the subwoofer while still attached to the bracket. However, I don't know this first bracket I took off. You'd probably have to take that off after all. So there is the plug we're after, after all that. Dad Dynamics makes good products, but I do wish their instructions were a bit better. So I'll probably have to upload this just in case anyone else needs it. One quick thing while I'm thinking about it. When you're reinserting these screws, especially, I don't think there's any plastic on plastic screws, but these self-tapping screws That you drop on the floor. These self-tapping screws, when you put them in, especially if they're going into plastic, I think this was metal, so it should be okay. 
What you should do is you should insert the screw in the hole. This sounds so stupid, but listen. And then do counterclockwise. Did you, did you hear that? Did you see it move just an inch? Not an inch, a millimeter. And now you're in the previous threads it created. Do that whenever possible so that you're not actually stripping these screw holes out as you remove them. They'll last a lot longer that way. It increases service life. And it's just a good habit to have. You know, take care of your stuff. It'll take care of you. Your car, your boots, your body, all that stuff. Take care of it. It's important. And if you do something wrong, like I just did, it doesn't take any time at all. to the correct mistake. And then we'll go to the same thing here. Make sure you reinstall the screws. The subwoofer ended up being several 10 millimeter bolts. I don't think you have to take the subwoofer box, the subwoofer panel, or the, the subwoofer off of its little mounting bracket there. I think you can just take the whole bracket off as a whole. So, Diode Dynamics did not sponsor me. They did not give me a discount. I bought this with my own money and installed it. I'm trying to help people out there that might be interested in this product. I'm going through this demonstration here of trying out the different settings. I think practically this is better than a lot of the LED conversions that just plug in, whether they be the CAN bus free air ones or you need add the load resistors or some of them you can swap out the relay still. I wish Diode Dynamics had the reverse tail light option where the unused blinker assembly is now used as an extra reverse light I think that would be great and I also wish the instructions were better again this might be me nitpicking here but those instructions just weren't good enough diode dynamics I'm sorry this if if I didn't know what I was doing I would be completely confused when I opened up that passenger side of the vehicle beyond that four out of five B plus whatever you want to call it it's a good product. It could be better, and hopefully they improve it in the future, and you can get that reverse light in the future. If this looks like something you'd want for your Outback, the link is in the description. Thanks for watching.